First time in here and I'm roped into a tasting. What a mug. Malbec. Bet I won't taste a thing. Argentina is what most people think about when they Oh, about I can. Oh, it's delicious. It's perfect. No, no, stupid man. Now she's got me. She'll say it's 30 quid a bottle and I have to buy a case. Not bad for 5.99. Under six quid. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Find the perfect wines for Christmas with 20% off the majestic Christmas collection. Come and explore. Southwest France is one of the most heavenly places on earth, both because of the decadence of the food and because it's the source of some of the most wonderful wines from saint Emilion, Pomerol and also further south. I'm here with Bruno Lube, who is from the Libonais, to uh, learn how to do Christmas Southwest France style. So what are you going to do for us? Well, I'm going to start with uh, cured salmon, with a simple salad of uh, beetroot and horseradish, then follow up with a roast partridge with all the trimmings, and uh, finish with a chia and chocolate cake uh, with a lovely uh, caramel and uh, orange sauce. I've got some wonderful wines to pair with those. Put the salt over the salmon, then the sugar, and then fennel seeds, which have been toasted a bit in the pan. A bit of uh, grated lemon zest. Now I wrapped the foil, and then leave it, um, obviously, flesh up, because then the, all the marinade will go through the flesh and uh, cure the salmon. This is going in a fridge for at least 24 hours. So now the salmon is cured. Wash off all the, all the thing on the top. I'm going to chop the white. And then we have the beetroot, which have been uh, baked in, uh, in a piece of foil with a bit of salt. Now I'm going to cut very thin slice. So when I arrive on the skin, I don't cut the skin, I just push a bit the slice, and then it will detach from the skin quite easily. Even this could be done uh, a few hours before and cover with clean film and place in the fridge so you can enjoy your glass of champagne like everybody else. So here I have a piece of uh, fresh radish which I peeled and put in the freezer the day before. And what I'm doing, I'm grating over the dish, but then it will create this effect like a bit of snow. Quite appropriate for Christmas in England. And that's it, it's ready. So I've chosen a vintage champagne from Verve Clico. 2004 was a fantastic year. Mm -hmm. Cheers. It's a lovely toastiness that's just beginning to develop. Oh, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. Perfect to wash it down, isn't it? It's a lovely combination, <laughs> isn't it? Yes, you've got the richness and then the balance, the cleaning, mm. cleaning balance of the... And the champagne. deal as well, with the champagne, is something special happening. And then a final choice, and this is a, a really classic uh, Chilean uh, Sauvignon Blanc. But here the flavours are a lot more herbal, so this will probably pick out the, the dill it's funny that the Sauvignon Blanc always has this uh, association. And for me, it reminds me of my uh, grandma's farm, you know, smelling the flower. This image always comes back to me. It's beautiful one to go with this dish. I have the partridge crown. Then I have uh, some uh, chopped, um, well, minced uh, flesh here, which is from the legs of the partridge and a bit of bacon. I'm going to also add a bit of chopped uh, liver, chicken liver or duck liver. So I'm going to chop the liver now to add to the fast. I'm adding the minced legs and the bacon. A little bit of fresh thyme, a bit of garlic. Now here I have some uh, bread, normally soaked in water, but um, I put some pot, why not? One egg. With the farce, I'm going to make a, a small sausage. It's basically a kind of a, of a pate mix, really tightly raw. And then I get this uh, nice cylinder. So now we're going to sear the, the partridge, some butter. Put the little roll of farce in the pan as well. Now it goes in the oven. Okay, now we're going to do the roast potatoes. So I boil the potatoes in uh, salted water. So very hot pan, of course, oil. And I'm going to just give them a little turn and then put them in hot oven to really nice, become colored and nice and uh, crispy. So the Brussels sprouts have been uh, quartered, so then cooked in um, salted boiling water. And then I put them in butter. I add the chestnuts, then give a, a good toss. So now we're going to put the dish together. As you can see now, we have this uh, really nice farce, you know, it's quite uh, soft. So the little crown on the plate. We have this kind of uh, sausage, so the roast potatoes. See, it's like it's, uh, the, the turkey. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really a, a typical uh, Christmas meal, but uh, maybe with a, a little difference. 
the key thing here is the, the, the very strong gamey flavours. If you combine that with a red wine that's got a lot of tannin, it makes that red wine seem a lot more bitter. To avoid that, I would pick a red wine that's very, very soft in tannins, either by having something that doesn't have a lot of tannin to start off with, or something that's nice and mature. I've got a, a Rioja that's actually well under 10 pounds a bottle. So you should have mm. soft tannins and a, and a slight gaminess um, from maturity. Maybe a little bit more sweet oak aromas and slightly riper fruit. Almost a caramel flavour coming through, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And that comes from the ageing process. Um, so this is showing a little bit of maturity, a little bit of, de of development. Not everyone likes red wine, and there are some rich, textured, um, intensely flavoured whites that I think could also go extremely well with this dish. Austrian Grüner Veltliner, um, especially from the, the better producers in the Wachau. Mm -hmm. You've got intensity of flavour, um, really kind of mouth-filling texture, uh, and I, I find these go e extremely well with turkey, and I think they'll go with the, the partridge as well. It has a little bit more textural richness and you know, it's, it's a bit more mouth-filling. As long as you enjoy and you like mm. and you fulfil what you're looking for, that's what it should be. And I, I like white wine, you know. I like Alsace, I like Risky. Very good. You know. so <laughs> but, um, but it goes very well, so, you know, why not? So this is a cake with no flour. The chia seeds and the grand almond will give uh, the right texture to the cake. Start with the, uh, the egg in a bowl with the sugar and give a good um, whisk. I add the butter the cocoa, the grand almond, now the orange zest, the bicarbonate of soda, chia seeds. Voila. Now I'm going to fill this little mould, which I uh, buttered and put some uh, cocoa in. Um, it could be done as a big cake, as a main piece. I like to do a little, um, little one like that. So now I put the uh, cakes in the oven and it will take about uh, 12 minutes at 175. So now I'm just going to do a caramel to go with the cake. Now I pour the orange juice in, deglaze the caramel with the orange juice in a bowl to cool down. At this stage I can add the orange segment. Now I'm going to add the, the Grand Marnier liqueur. It's quite hot. A little spoon of uh, creme fraiche or sour cream. And then the caramel sauce with Grand Marnier pouring on the top. It will add the chia chocolate cake with orange caramel. My dream wine to go with this, I've actually chosen something from South Africa. But there is a link with France because this was Napoleon's favourite wine. And this is made from muscat grapes that are dried, pressed, fermented, and the drying concentrates the sugars in them. So this isn't fortified but it is intensely sweet. Picking up the orange all often. Mm, mm. So the wine goes through the dessert in, in much the same way as the orange yeah. sauce does, but just yeah. adding a slightly different aromatic dimension. Australia has a great tradition of making sweet, what they call sticky... Sticky wines. Sticky yeah. wines, and, and I've got an Australian sticky here. And this is made from grapes that are that slightly left to dry on the vine before they're harvested. Um, and then the, the fermentation is stopped by adding alcohol to leave a lot of residual sugar. But to the nose, you have uh, more, more fruits to the nose. Mm -hmm. You have more muscat kind of smell. And mm. This one is, is different. I mean, mm. he, um, he comes from another angle. This is like the... Pe In a way, this is too perfect. With the, the really classic British Christmas pudding, Australian Muscat is one of the few wines I think that's really sweet enough to stand up to the, the onslaught of sweetness that comes from those, yeah. those styles of pudding. I think it will, it will go very well in a, in a dinner party because this mm. is such a perfect match, you can't go wrong really, mm. I think. Mm. 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 And why not uh, having them a, in a for afternoon tea, you know, late afternoon, have a cup of tea, then a, a, a nice glass of sticky wine and a few biscuits, and that would be the, the perfect... Uh, oh yes, yes, I agree. <laughs> a cup of tea and you just go on. Yes, perfect, <laughs> yes, a little sugar boost. Beautiful during the mm. Christmas period. Find the perfect wines for Christmas with 20% off the Majestic Christmas Collection. Come and explore.